Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends. And today we're going to talk about Magic the Gathering dual decks, Merfolk versus Goblins. Wizards of the Coast has released the full deck lists, both of the decks that are included in this box set. And we're going to take a look at those deck lists today, talk about what cards are included, maybe what we would have liked to have seen that is not there, and what kind of value you can expect from this product. Now, quickly before we get started, if you check out the description below, you'll find a few ways to help support the channel, one of which is our Patreon page, and we just developed a new classic art treasure token. So if you're interested in seeing that and how to get it, check out the link. Also, you'll find some Amazon product links below. If you make any purchases on Amazon, no matter what it is, once you go through those links, we'll get a small percentage back. And then finally, Flipside Gaming has provided a promo code for our viewers. You can pre-order Iconic Masters there. They have a whole lot of stuff on their site, so definitely check it out. With that being said, let's get into the details for this product. Now, not too much has changed with this product if you're familiar with it. You're going to get two 60-card decks. You're still going to get two deck boxes. You're still going to get two spin-down die. And the price point is still $24.99. And, of course, this is released on November 10th. Now... You're going to notice a few things when you look at the front of the box. You're going to see the feature cards here. It is Master of Waves and Warren Instigator. Actually, not bad value there. And the copies you're going to get have all new art, and they're actually going to be foil copies as well. You can't really tell that from the photograph here. They also mentioned there's going to be four other cards included that will have brand new art. I'm assuming two from each set, but they did not say yet which ones these are. So we're going to take a look at the deck lists that have been revealed. Now, it was interesting. These deck lists were revealed on Wizards French webpage, but not on the English one. Not sure if it got posted there a little too early or what exactly happened, but the information is out there. And at least of the time of recording, this hasn't shown up yet on the English page, but can still be found on the French page. They haven't taken it down or anything like that. So let's get into it and dig in and see what we have here. We're going to start off with a Merfolk deck. And we'll begin with the creatures. And you know the first one already, Master of Waves. Now, this is the original version of the card, of course. And that's what you're going to see here when we go through these deck lists. We're going to be looking at recent printings of these cards, since with the exception of the two headlining cards, we don't really have any other photographs. So, Master of Waves, though, good value. Like I said, it's a $3, $4 card, so it's actually a pretty nice inclusion. You're going to get a couple copies of Cold-Eyed Selkie, and the card financially isn't worth a whole lot, but it does see play in some modern merfolk builds, so it's actually a pretty nice inclusion if you don't have copies of it. Harbinger of the Tides, this is another card that isn't super pricey or anything, but again, can see play in both legacy and modern versions of merfolk. Ink Fathom Divers. Now, this is an Island Walk card. You're going to notice very quickly here that is the idea behind this deck. Maybe not too surprising to folks who normally play Merfolk, but this is all about getting some Island Walk creatures out, maybe backing them up with a few tempo plays and some card draw, and then attacking in and having your opponent not being able to block. And this is one of those cards that will help you set that up. Next, we have Master of the Pearl Trident. This is actually another nice inclusion. Five, six dollar card. Sees play in Legacy and Modern versions of Merfolk. It's a fantastic Merfolk lore. Of course, it's giving Island Walk, which is a key part of the strategy for this particular deck. And just overall, it's a pretty cool inclusion because it's never been reprinted before. I mean, it was in Magic 2013, so I'm kind of happy to see it here. Now, I will tell you right now, Lord of Atlantis didn't make the cut, and that's kind of sad. I would have liked to have seen that card because it was one of the original Magic cards. We get the Master of the Pearl Trident instead, though, which is still a good card. Merfolk Looter. This is another card that's not very expensive or anything like that, but it makes sense in this deck for what it's trying to do. Merfolk Sovereign. Another card, again, that's not super expensive, but this does see play sometimes in the modern Merfolk builds. Merfolk Wayfinder. This is a card that helps you dig a little bit, find your islands, hit your land drops. Mero Regery, another one that's actually pretty sweet. Another five, six dollar card here. And it's another Merfolk Lord giving them all plus one, plus one. And also, whenever you play a Merfolk spell, you may tap or untap target permanent. So it kind of makes sense also with the tempo play that's going on in this particular build. This is another card that does see play again in both legacy and modern versions of Merfolk at times. Root Water Hunter, two copies of this. This one was last printed in Tempest, so it's actually an interesting inclusion. Again, not an expensive one, but I kind of like that it's here. I like pingers, especially if they can hit creatures or players. You'll get three copies of Scroll Thief. 
a copy of Streambed Aquatex, which is a way to turn your opponent's lands into islands. Two copies of Tidal Carrier. This is another old one from Apocalypse, and that first ability is actually kind of sweet, though. It lets you dig through the top of your deck for some merfolk to put into your hand. Sometimes you miss with this card. The second ability, though, not really exciting. I mean, paying a blue and three to get this flying when it's a one-two, <laughs> that's not really what you want to be doing with this card. It's really all about that first ability and trying to get more cards into your hand. Tidal Warrior, another old reprint. You get two copies of this card. It's from Stronghold, another one that's going to turn your opponent's lands into islands, at least temporarily. Tidebinder Mage, good tempo card here. Cheap 2-2 two, two for 2 that's also going to let you kind of freeze something for a turn. Only works on red or green creatures and opponent controls, but the idea here is you're playing this, of course, against the Red Goblin deck. Wake Thrasher. This one's an Eventide Rare, and Eventide Rares tend to be a little explosive at times. They can go up in value kind of quickly if they start seeing a little bit of play here and there, just because print runs during that block were down quite a bit due to a little bit less enthusiasm about the game at that time. So Wake Thrasher is actually a pretty cool inclusion because this is a rare that has never been reprinted, and even though it doesn't see a lot of competitive play or anything, it does see some cube play. It's actually a really sweet cube card, and it does run you around $3, so... Not a bad inclusion. All right, let's move on to some sorceries. We're going to start off with four copies of Aqueduct's Will. And this is not an expensive card again here, but it is one that actually sees modern play out of sideboard sometimes from Merfolk decks. It's kind of nice here because it does turn your opponent's lands into islands and also allows you for some card draw so it can replace itself. That's quite good for one mana. Concentrates here. You get a copy of that. This is a good card draw spell. Maybe... Newer players may know this better as Harmonize. Basically, this was the original version. And then in Planar Chaos, they made a color-shifted version that was Harmonize. This is the original one. Mindspring, another card draw spell. Let's look at some instants. We have Engulf the Shore. Couple of Essence Scatters. A Misdirection, not a bad inclusion here. It's like a $2 card. Sometimes this does see play in Legacy Merfolk out of the sideboard. A lot of decks will run one of these just because it has a lot of versatility and you can cast it for free at times. Tidal Wave, good tempo card again. Train Tactics, another tempo card. And we get a couple enchantments with two copies of Claustrophobia. And let's look at our lands. You're going to get a copy of Blighted Cataract, which later in the game can turn into some card draw. And two copies of Lonely Sandbar, one of the original cycling lands. And 21 islands. All right, let's look at the Goblin deck. Now, we saw the strategy with the Merfolk deck is about trying to make the Merfolk unblockable by using the Island Walk mechanic and also tempoing out your opponent, winning through some extra card draw, that type of thing. While Goblins are a little more brute force, you're going to see them going wide. That's the main strategy here. There's a little bit of side burn strategy, as you can imagine, too. But for the most part, this is all about going wide and attacking in and being aggressive. Let's start off with the Creatures. We start off with a featured one, Warren Instigator. And this card actually does see some play in modern Goblin decks. You don't see it all the time in Legacy versions because you have Goblin Lackey, which only costs one, is very similar. But this card does see play, and it's actually a $9 card, so it's a pretty nice inclusion here. Battle Squadron. So here's a card that supports the go wide idea, which you'll see in a few moments. A couple of Bogart Brutes, and nothing to say about these, just 3 2 Menaces, but they're pretty decent. You get an Ember Hauler, which is a small creature, but also starts to promote that light burn strategy. A couple copies of Foundry Street Denizen, and this is another card that's not expensive or anything, but actually does see some play in modern builds of goblins from time to time. Gem Palm Incinerator. With enough setup, this can be a very powerful card. Next, we have Goblin Chieftain. This is the Lord for the deck here. Now, it would have been nice to see Goblin King, but this deck doesn't really make a whole lot of sense with Goblin King because these goblins aren't trying to mountain walk. The haste is actually much better in this particular situation, especially considering you're supposed to be playing this against the Merfolk deck, and if you don't have any ways to turn their islands into mountains, Goblin King wouldn't be so great. So I guess it makes sense. I would have liked to have seen some more old cards for nostalgia, but this one is just fine. And guess what? It's a 4 or $5 card. Can't complain about that. And it is a card that sees play in Legacy as well as modern versions of the Goblin deck. Goblin Diplomats to run a little bit of interference. 
Goblin Glory Chaser from Magic Origins. Goblin Goon gets a reprint. This is another old one, as you can see here. This card was actually used in Magic Online's Vintage Masters, and it can be a pretty powerful card, especially in a build like this. Goblin Rabble Master, an oldie but goodie from a couple of years back in Standard. This card definitely left its footprint there during that time. Goblin Rays Runners. You get two copies of Goblin Ringleader, another card that's not super expensive, but they'll run a dollar or two, and yes, you will see these show up in some Legacy Goblin builds for sure. Goblin Tunneler. You get a couple copies of Goblin War Driver. Battlecry is going to be really nice in this deck. Krenko Mob Boss. It's actually a nice one, too. Another 4 or $5 card, so pretty good financial inclusion here. And, of course, this helps you just go crazy with that go-wide strategy. All right, let's look at Sorceries. Get yourself Clever Riot. Goblin Grenade. And Goblin Grenades, again, do see some constructive play as well sometimes in Modern. Hordling Outburst. Good way to help you go wide with three tokens. Three copies of Krenko's Command to help you go wide. A copy of Relentless Assault. And some instants. Two copies of Brute Strength. You know it from Mom and Cat. Three copies of Ghostfire. This is kind of an interesting inclusion. This is basically the only way this deck can deal with Master of Waves on the other side of the table. <laughs> so I guess it's a creative way to do that. Two copies of Tower Fire, another card that does see some constructive play, sometimes out of sideboards of like modern goblin decks. Artifacts. You get a Brittle Effigy. And a Goblin Charbelcher. This was reprinted in Eternal Masters, and there have been some pretty crazy decks in the past for both Vintage as well as Legacy that use this card. Of course, they use it in an unfair way. <laughs> this deck's not doing that. This deck is trying to use it in a fair way as just another way to burn your opponent here and there. Let's look at the lands. You get two copies of Blighted Gorge, another card that turns into burn later in the game. A couple copies of Forgotten Cave, again, one of those early cycling cards. And you get 20 Mountains. Now that we've seen the deck list, what do we think about the product? Well, overall, I kind of like the idea here. Goblins, merfolk, tribal decks, it seems like a lot of fun. I hope they are balanced. That has been an issue with past products sometimes with the dual decks, that you do get two decks and they are not balanced well. So hopefully that's not the case. And if that isn't the case, I think these could be a lot of fun to play out of the box, actually. Maybe even teach a new player how to play the game with something like this. So with that being said... What about the value when it comes to, is it worth the $24.99 I'm going to pay at my LGS or my Target or Walmart to pick this thing up? Well, it depends on what you're looking for, honestly. Now, when you talk about pure card value, if I were to add up all the values of the cards today, they would come to about $50. So yeah, I would be getting $25 worth of value out of this product. But you have to adjust those expectations a little bit because once this product actually hits stores, the values will go down because more copies are entering into the marketplace, right? So that's going to be an issue if you're just thinking about pure value. Secondly, a lot of the cards that are worth a dollar, two dollars, you're not going to really be able to flip them and make any sort of money off them. So that's not going to be very helpful for you either. Now, with that being said, they did put some nice inclusions in here. We saw a $9 card, plenty of 4 or $5 cards. That's actually pretty good, and I think they walked the line pretty well of adding value to this and having some reason for some established players to care about it, but also keep it out of the hands of people that maybe would try to flip it or maybe just hardcore players going in to try to get four copies of everything in there because... That's where you run into a problem with a product like this, and this is where you have to kind of adjust your expectations when it comes to value. This product is targeted for brand new players. They want this to sit on shelves at your Target and your Walmarts, and they want new players to stumble upon these and buy them and play them and learn the game and enter into the game, and that's vitally important for the growth and the health of the game. So yes, I support that 100%. Is it sad that we don't see some of the reprints that maybe I mentioned during the video? Like, sure, it would have been cool to get a Lord of Atlantis a curse catcher, uh, maybe even a goblin guide if you want to get too crazy, right? And the goblin king, like I said before, there would have been some other nice inclusions that could have been pretty cool here. 
But at the same time, if the value starts to get too high, these products will never get into new players' hands, and that becomes a big problem. If they go into established players' hands too much where they're just gone off the shelves, or if people buy them to try to flip them or something like that, then you never get the new players into the game, and that is very detrimental. So what do they do? They create other venues for the more hardcore players. I mean, there's Iconic Masters coming up a week after this is released. You're going to have Masters 25 in March. We've seen Modern Masters and Eternal Masters in the past. I'm sure we'll see more of those again. So you have From the Vault, you have all these type of things that are really for the more hardcore players to keep them engaged and interested. This isn't really what that is. So I, I like this product, but you do have to adjust the expectations a little bit. If you want to buy this, maybe teach someone to play the game, have fun with it, fun with some friends who maybe used to play and haven't played in a long time, don't have decks anymore. That's what this is for. Or maybe you just want one or two of these cards because you're missing one or two for a modern merfolk or goblin deck or something like that, and you can pick it up and get the card, and that's awesome, right? So I think they did a good job of walking the line this time around. Ultimately, I'll reserve my final judgment until I get to play with these decks and actually see how balanced or not balanced they are yeah that's my thoughts for right now but until next time though hey thanks for watching please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day hey thanks for watching this video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on patreon check out the description below for links to our patreon page as well as our amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel finally if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on heroes and legends talk to you again soon and have a great day